gift from a, from a uh, viewer. Remember I opened up that mail yesterday? This was attached to one of the letters that I didn't open up on the camera. It's from, uh, how do you pronounce your name, bud? You're in Scotland. And his name is spelled E-U-A-N. Ewan? Ew. Ewan. I, at first I thought it was Evan, but it was E-U-A-N. So thank you very much, bud, for, uh, I think you made this, right? I think so. It looks like it's handmade. Pretty cool. It's my favorite colors. So, how old did you say you were again, bud? I'm gonna go check out your letter again. Let's see, you are 11 years old. And you know what, I have more friends in Scotland too. I like it out there. I like the way you guys talk, your accent. I like it, so I like talking to you. So, I'm gonna get going with my day here and I'm gonna wear this bracelet for the day. And I will Talk to you all in a little bit. I gotta go unload my first load here in Regina, Saskatchewan. And then we're heading down to Lethbridge, Alberta. That'll take most of the day to get there. Then we're unloading there tomorrow morning. All right. So we got to our customer here. And it turns out I'm third in line. And the guys in front of me have got big, big loads that they gotta hand bomb off too. So I'll be here most of the day. That's okay kind of an awkward position because we're kind of uh, we had to wait on the road on the side of the road and the road isn't really not like really, there's nowhere else to park and wait but this is where they always have their lineups but that's just you know how it goes so I'm glad I got a good amount of fuel here that's my fuel gauge right there oh it's all dirty let me clean that off for you all right, a little cleaner we got about a third of a tank so if we do have to sit here all day uh, we'll have enough fuel to start her up and cool the truck down every now and then if we need to because it's gonna get hot today it is a clear sunny day in Saskatchewan and it's gonna get hot that's right maybe we'll go for a walk no we can't really go too far because we have to stay in line and you know you snooze you lose if I go for a walk and these guys move up and someone behind me you know he's just gonna go right in front of me yeah Okay guys, so I will talk to you in a bit, uh, we'll get rolling. From here we're gonna go to uh, probably Flying J here in town, or in Moose Jaw, we'll see. Flying J, clean off his windshield here. And then, fuel up the tanks. Cause she's thirsty. And a lot of you keep asking me, Chuck a Josh, why is there a Mercedes sign on your steering wheel? It's because Mercedes owns Freightliner. They bought Freightliner, and I have a Mercedes engine in my truck. Oh, and another guy just pulled up behind me. Oh, the poor soul. He's going to have to wait here all day. Oh, poor guy. He's right over there. See him? Hey, guys. Let's hurry up and wait. So while we're waiting, I decided to have some cereal. In the truck I have oats, honey, raisins, and almonds, simply granola from Quaker. That's what I've been eating lately, and it's very heavy, so you don't need to put too much in the bowl. The first time, I put in like a full bowl, because usually if I eat other cereals, I'll fill it right up, because I'm a hungry man. But this is very heavy, very thick and heavy, so uh, I couldn't finish it, and then that wastes it, right? So, uh, I've got my almond milk in here. Is this brand new? No, it's open already. Does it shake well again? We tried that yesterday. Okay, I'm gonna enjoy this delicious little meal here. And uh, probably dust down the truck a little bit. It's so hard to keep the inside of my truck clean. I know you guys are probably like, man, his truck looks a little bit messy. I know where everything is. To me, it's all perfectly organized. But uh, living with uh, a big dog in here, it's a daily process multiple times a day of cleaning the truck down if I want to keep it spotless and sparkling. And I just don't have that time every day, but I'll I keep it as clean as I can. Uh, this here is just my little garbage. Uh, actually, no, that's not my garbage file. There's garbage in here, but I have my, my Frisbee in there. I got my license plate in here. I'm wondering what to do with this license plate that I got from Shelly yesterday. 
I'm wondering, I want to put it on the front of my truck, but I can't put it on my grill because I already have my Trucker Josh plate there. I can't have two license plates on my grill, that's just a little cluttered, isn't it? Maybe not, maybe I can sort of... I'll figure it out. I just bought a house. I just bought a house. I just got approved, the bank just said, mm -hmm, go ahead, it's yours. So my house is sold, and my new house is purchased. Possession date is August 23rd, but don't get too excited yet. I'm gonna build the, build the suspense yet before I show you the house, but I, I probably won't be able to wait until I'm totally moved in. I'll probably show you it as soon as I take possession of it, August 23rd, we'll see. I'm excited. <laughs> All right, let's hit the road. We're finally unloaded here in Regina. We're headed to Lethbridge, Alberta. Let's get some miles behind us. Well, here we go. We just left Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. So we left Regina about an hour ago. We stopped in Moose Jaw to uh, fuel the truck. It worked out good because then I could use the fax machines here to uh, fax some final documents back and forth between uh, my realtor and I. So everything is done. Everything is signed. Everything is sealed. I own a new house and I take possession of it on the 23rd of August. So technically, I guess, I don't own it until the 23rd or how does that work? It's mine, right? Either way, they have to get out. It's mine now. <laughs> they have a, they have another place they're moving to anyway, the people who uh, I bought from. And as soon as I'm out, someone's moving into my house. So it's just like we're playing musical houses, you know? A big old game of musical chairs just with houses. Hopefully when the music stops, everybody has a house. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, Diesel? Oh, you're gonna love it, Diesel. Diesel is gonna love it. You have so much room, man. And, and we're putting a fence around the backyard. We, uh, we don't have a fence around the backyard yet. I was gonna put the underground fence. I probably might, I, I might still do that. But for now, I'm building a, a fence around the backyard just to keep diesel there. But it's going to be a huge backyard. I mean, this isn't just a little average backyard. This is a backyard. I just don't want diesel... Uh, I want to be able to leave him back there, right? And not worry about him. That, like, I'll keep an eye on him, but I don't want to have to watch him every single millisecond. I want to be able to, you know, barbecue on my deck or something and not have to worry about him taking off into the bushes getting all kinds of poison ivy and wood picks. That also keeps other animals out of my yard, right? Because I'm living so far out in the country, where I bought my property is bear country. There's a lot of bears there, black bears. And to keep them out of my yard, I am putting the fence around my yard. So it's not just to keep diesel in, it's to keep the bears, coyotes, and wolves out of my yard. That way I can walk out into my yard at night, have a bonfire, and not worry about an uninvited guest. You know what I mean? And I don't have to sit there with a shotgun or a, or a, a high-powered rifle the whole time just waiting to shoot Winnie the Pooh or something, right? But there is lots of wildlife around that area. It is, it's out there. It's in the middle of nowhere. I'm happy. I'm really happy with it. It's exactly what I wanted. I did sort of want a little bit more privacy, a little bit more seclusion. But like I was saying before, you can't have everything in life. You gotta sacrifice something sometimes. No property is absolutely perfect. This was my best bet. So here we go. As we drive away from our property. <laughs> We're going west and I bought a house in the east. On the eastern prairies, but. Oh, well, I'm not gonna be home for a week or two yet at least, so. At least everything's said and done. I'll get home, I'll pack everything up go to Seattle, come back, go on a short trip, move, we'll be back to the regular grind after that. But this, this is the Canadian prairies at their best. Remember how bad they were in wintertime? Minus 50. Temperature's about 75 Fahrenheit right now. Excuse me about that. Yeah, about 75, 80 Fahrenheit. About 25 to 30 degrees Celsius. Smooth, paved road, green grass. This is paradise right here. Paradise. Anybody want a house? There's a house on the road over there. 
That's the last two out of three. There was another one. I didn't get the get that one on camera, but I see so much of that out here. You know, I'm actually seeing it more and more. Am I alone in this? Is anyone else seeing that more and more? Those houses that get pulled down the road? How many of you live in a house like that? How many of you did that? How many of you bought property and then built a house somewhere else? Or got it built and then moved it to where your property is? I'm not talking about moving old houses. I'm talking about building a brand spanking new house and then moving it. Have any of you done that? And if so, could you give me a reason why did it, was it a, a cost issue? Did you save money doing that? Or what is the reason people do that? Why would they build it over there just to move it back over to where they live? Why wouldn't they just build it where they want it in the first place, right? It's a question I've asked multiple times before, but now I'm asking you guys if you know the answer. Is it cheaper or what? What's, what's the deal with that? Why do people do that? Alrighty, we're just coming up to the Alberta border. There's a sign way over on the right. Here's the rest area signs, the first rest area in the province of Alberta. I love Alberta. I do. Everything's nice. Welcome to Alberta. I know the camera probably won't pick that sign up there, but they welcomed us. Wild Rose Country. That's their little slogan. Wild Rose Country. My sister's name is Rose. Wild Rose Country. <laughs> That's funny. So, Alberta's got two big cities, Calgary and Edmonton. We're heading to neither of them today. We're going down to a smaller city called Lethbridge. I think Lethbridge is probably comparable somewhat to Steinbach in Manitoba. I think something like that smaller city still got everything you need there but it's just not a major metropolitan area you know what I mean you know what I mean and it's in the south so it's in the southeast of Alberta so it's very similar to Steinbeck Manitoba yeah. beautiful country out here beautiful country we're straight north I believe of uh, West Montana, Idaho, Utah, all that stuff. Hey, the shade charger from Idaho. Hey, we're not too far from them right now. Well, we just went through Medicine Hat, Alberta. I believe this is Crow's Nest Highway. Highway 3, I believe, in Alberta. Someone will correct me if I'm wrong. This takes us through Lethbridge. lane highway the rest of the way but it's very nice two lane you can see there's a nice wide shoulder very nice and smooth well maintained must be Alberta so Alberta like I was saying before is like directly north of the western states Montana Idaho very much of the same terrain you know, not much bush, trees, just around properties like this here on the left. Uh, most of the fields out here, if they are going to grow any crops, like you see on the right, I don't know if that picks up under the sun. There's uh, the watering systems. you got to water your fields here because it's very dry. This is sort of straight north of Nevada too, right? So it's sort of like the Canadian dry lands. They, I think we call them the Canadian badlands, right? Is that a thing? Mostly what you find out here is like ranches, cattle ranches, horse ranches, you know, western stuff. Cowboys and cowgirls, country music, all that kind of stuff. Well, Diesel here has been very busy editing. Very busy. You've been a very good boy. You deserve to go outside. Uh, you, know, you know, I've been trying real hard, man. It's been a lot of work. You want to go outside? Yeah? A little shy? The tail wag back there. All right, come on, let's go outside. I don't know what it is about the camera. He was so excited a second ago. We got here. Wait, Diesel. Hey, wait. What are you gonna jump down from the seat? Why are you on my seat? It's down on the floor, man. Okay, so that makes it a lot easier for both of us. Oh boy. 
Jeez, man. Go straight for the tree. Jeez, I gotta close the door first. Oh, he's on a mission. I gotta close the door, okay? No, don't go back in yet. That's sort of how we get out of the truck sometimes. We just sort of fall out. Here. Alright, Diesel. Look how nicely landscaped this is here, eh? Look how green the grass is. Remember what I was telling you before that there there isn't really a lot of green stuff out here because it's sort of desertish. It's out in Alberta. Just we're probably about north of Idaho right now. So this is definitely professionally landscaped, and this would have been uh, what do you call it, sod? They would have laid it down like fake grass or fake grass or it's real grass, but it was grown somewhere else. And to me, that's fake grass. I don't know. But well, whatever. What do you think, Diesel? Oh, fake grass and all. It's nice and soft. Yeah, it is nice and soft. It's very nice. You sort of just want to roll around in it. Diesel, you want to roll around in it? I do. Oh. Uh, hey, Diesel, come lay in the grass with me. Here we go. Diesel, come here. Play in the grass with me, man. Play in the grass. So, what are you doing, man? You're on the ground. Come on, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. There we go. Good boy. So, this is the end of the day here in Alberta. You guys know what to do. There's a description box down below. Go check it out if you haven't already, if you're new, because there's links to my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram in there. And you can find me there and give me a follow and join the club. Apparently they get mosquitoes in Alberta. Oh, that's great. That sort of ruins the experience. But this grass is so soft. I honestly, I could sleep right here. I could. What do you, what do you, Diesel? You think you could sleep here? Uh, I could sleep anywhere, Mike. The mosquito on your face. Sorry. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching today. I'll see you tomorrow, 4 a.m. Central Time, just like every other day.